Okay, well, hello, hello, uh, everybody. Um, my name is Mathias Rotripon, and I will introduce our, our speaker for the, the first uh, I3H seminar of the term. Uh, so our speaker, we are very happy to have uh, Mattia Nardotto with us. In fact, doubly happy because not only will he talk about a fascinating topic, I'm sure, and uh, a very nice paper, uh, but also because it's his first official day at uh, our university and our faculty. Uh, and uh, so he's already giving a seminar, it's great. Um, the, so he comes from uh, the, uh, he was an associate professor until recently uh, at the Department of Management, Strategy and Innovation of the Kai Leuven. Uh, he's a CPR associate, uh, research associate at CECIFO, associate editor of the European Economic Review. Uh, before joining Leuven, I think in 2017, uh, he did a PhD in economics uh, in Bologna, uh, and then he was a postdoc in uh, ENST Paris Tech in Cologne and in Berlin. Why he was also a visiting researcher at NYU. Uh, he has a very interesting set of publications uh, next to today's paper, which happens to have been accepted, and I think just published in the Review of Economics and Statistics. Uh, he had a paper in the Review of Economic Studies on uh, Internet and Politics, Evidence from UK Local Elections and Local Government Policies. Uh, he has done work on um, effective reminders, so more incentive theory uh, in management science. He has done work on uh, IO, Unbundling the Incumbent Evidence from UK Broadband with Tommaso Valetti and Frank Verboven in the Journal of European Economic Association. And he has a number of other a publication uh, in the in the process in pretty good journals uh, and uh, as uh, uh, he told me just before uh, his interests broadly are in industrial organization competition policy political economy and behavioral economics and uh, that includes connection with health economics and therefore we are very interested to listen to him today thank you yeah thanks for inviting me i hope you'll partner me in time presentation is not as good. Last time I presented the paper was uh, more than a year ago. So yesterday I was revising the slides uh, to give a decent talk, I hope I manage. So this is a project, it's uh, Sophia, who you know very well. And uh, she is now at the European Commission. And then with Carol Proper and Tommaso Valletti who are at Imperial College uh, in London. Uh, the paper is about the diffusion of a new media, the most important new media in the last recent, the recent decades is the internet, and now this has changed um, among many markets that we are all aware of the healthcare sector. Okay, so let me start with the following quote from the New England Journal of Medicine, uh, more than ten years ago now. Uh, in, this, uh, in these articles, two prominent scholars, they write that medicine has a long history of, of innovation. Doctors have embraced new technologies with the goal of improving patient conditions, but nothing has changed clinical practice more fundamentally than one recent innovation, that is the internet. And it's profound effects derived from the fact that the wide previous technologies have been fully under the control of doctors, the new one, the internet, is equally in the hands of patients. And uh, these two economists talks like, speaks like an interesting uh, setting, because usually when you teach micro, you have to make the example of a credence good and a market in which there is a strong informational asymmetry between parties, you always talk about that. Okay? Because in healthcare, you have a very well informed party, the doctor, that actually determines the supply of product. So, which product the consumer, the patient, is going to receive. And the internet is changing the market, not because a new drug has been discovered or a new technique or something, but because it's changing the relationship between the two parties. Okay. Now, this paper capture something that was going on, especially in the medical literature. So doctors were noticing that patients were coming in their, were changing in their attitudes over the years. 
And in 2010, uh, let's say the article comes out because now it's too evident. Okay? And they want to open uh, the discussion. Right before, there was a growing body of press articles, scientific contributions, and so on, talking about this, how the, the, the relationship doctor-patient is changing and the interaction. So let's start by this. This is the main motivation of the paper. Uh, patients look for information online. This is a cover of The Economist uh, four years ago, 2018. And uh, because of this, uh, need for special services, use of data, and so on, information search by you, by, by consumers, by patients, you start seeing that actually new products have been brought to markets by new companies. Products that intend to monitor better the status of patients, get better and quicker diagnosis, and so on. So patients who want to have more control on their health status. So then you have the broad question, is then the provision of healthcare changing? So is, this an, is that as an impact on what the patients are getting in this market from their doctors, right? Think about your own experience. Now, Dr. Google is the first thing that people look when they have symptoms, when they need to know something about drugs or how to use a drug and so on, right? So is this changing what patients get? Because at the end of the day, it was traditionally an asymmetric market with an informed party and an uninformed one. But doctors still determine in many national healthcare systems what the patient is going to get at the end. So they are still the gatekeeper. Okay, so I can get a patient who thinks or she thinks he knows everything about the disease, has a very clear idea on the treatment he or she should receive. But the doctor, at the end of the day, should still be the person that, uh, that finally decides, okay? But maybe something is changing. Of course, this is a broad question, and uh, we don't tackle every possible dimension of the problem, all possible procedures and drugs and so on. We choose a setting for which we can claim that we were the first to have an empirical answer, okay? And we look at the following well-defined research question. So did internet diffusion affect childbirth procedures throughout the first decade of the, of the 2000s? Okay. So are mothers going online, getting some information, and then obtaining something different from their doctors when compared to a mother that doesn't go online? Okay. So to give you a takeaway of the results and the methodology, the identification is based on reproducing in the data an experiment, right? So I prepared a uh, few lines for the, uh, for the doctors. Uh, I don't think I have to explain a lot to economists. We are always chasing for this, uh, for this type of identification strategies. But the idea is that uh, the comparison I'll try to make mimics an experiment. So we'll look for mothers who are exposed to the internet, who have good access to the internet, and so they receive the treatment with other mothers who, for, other, for, for some exogenous reason, we will exploit technology in this case, cannot access the internet. And so our, our, they are our control group. Okay? So we will have treated mothers who go online and control mothers who don't go online. Yeah. Thank you, questions. I wonder why mothers are not just like um, medical students or the, in general. Yeah, I'm referring to mothers. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, well, we don't know who decides uh, about the procedure. Probably it's an household decision. Yeah. And second question, I was thinking about like keeping up with information, like you can find on the internet. What is, what is just like general information yeah. about the disease that you think you have, you know, whatever mm -hmm. the website? And then I also noticed that the you know better that there are some doctors giving advice on some website. Um, mm -hmm. and you yeah, can yeah. actually ask them and they and they provide information or they comment yeah. on your specific question. Is that type of information considered as the information that you could get in the Well, I can yeah, so here we have I don't know, suppose that you want to answer this question empirically, you can take different routes, right? 
So you can look for a survey and look, ask uh, women uh, how they get birth and why they chose one procedure or the other, what influenced their choice, where they look for advice, and so on. The way we follow is different. So we look, so we try to get this sort of natural experiment going on in the data, and we simply use then, um, we, we look for search choices. So we compare mothers with internet with mothers with no internet, and we, and we see if they do different. We use the universe of mothers in the UK, so that's where we start from. So we have the possibility to, to get access to this huge data set. So on the other hand, as a limitation that we don't know what's going on in their house. So we don't know where they go and look for information. So here in the paper, we speculate, we provide evidence coming from surveys and so on that can give you an intuition of what's going on. But of course, we don't have clear data. We don't have data on what they search online and so on. So mother by mother. It could be both, both information and the China really have the internet and both interaction and the MMB internet with some doctors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this should be controlled for in our setting. So but as you will see. <clears throat> so to give you a takeaway of the result, we show that uh, uh, internet do changes what mothers get, and those who are online are more likely to get a C-section. And to give you an idea, a sense of the size of the phenomenon. Internet accounts for one fifth of the total increase in C section that we observed in the decade. Okay, so the internet channel accounts for one fifth. Not only that, it's also we try to unpack the effect, and we see that the effect is driven by first time mothers. So, what in this market is the inexperienced consumer, if you want, while multiple times mothers, so mothers at the second, third, and so on, pregnancy, they are not affected much and also by the less educated mother, mothers, okay? We also see, and that's a, a way to interpret this, is that, uh, well, we also see that there is no impact on the healthcare, on healthcare outcomes of mothers and newborns. And our interpretation of that is that those who change behavior, those who shift and from one treatment to the other, are not the marginal mothers, those for uh, whom the procedure would really matter, but they are the intramarginal ones from a healthcare perspective. So they need a new ones. And that's why then they don't suffer. So they're relatively healthy and they don't suffer for adverse events. So a possible confounding fa uh, factor is that if the mother has access to the internet, also the doctor, because the, I guess they're the same geographic. Yes, location. yes, yes. For what I heard, I'm not the expert, but uh, uh, C sections mainly for the convenience of doctors. Sometimes, because then you yeah, don't have to wake up at night, etc. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we don't do it on and, and so it's more at the expense of mothers. So yes. why we would have information yeah. to the mother mm -hmm. increase C sections? You know, the, it, it, it could be more like the doctors realize, oh, yeah, yeah, I can yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's easy. Let uh, me show you the identification strategy and then uh, okay. I'm sure it could. At least empirically, this is going to, no, this is not going to play a role. But I would, because you know, I'm surprised that this can, if I'm more informed, I should be more defensive, I guess, against this section. I don't know what should be at play at the doctor's side. For sure, they might like no, as, a, as, a, as a would be mother, mm -hmm. uh, having a information that there is too much C section, too many C sections, should reduce my willingness and not increase yeah, my yeah. willingness. That depends, the that depends on the content of information. Uh, actually, the, let me let me okay. show you and then now we can discuss it. So let me give you a glimpse. You see, that's why I have this immediately this slide at the beginning of the presentation. This is a bit for the PhD students. So then I'll try to convince you, I'll try to show you what I'm going to do, okay? So this is a map uh, of some neighborhoods, some blocks in, in the UK. And uh, the idea, the basic idea of the identification strategy is to compare mothers living in the red block Okay, it's really a block in London, just a few buildings. With mothers living in the green block. And these are treated and controls. Why? Because they are, I will show you, perfectly balanced in characteristics. They go to the same doctor because the 
catch by now, the doctor is much larger. So this applies also to the point of my own Mikhail. So they are dealing with the same person. But this one has good internet, and this is a bad internet. Basically, this is the meter and this is the control. So you know the doctor location. So we don't know the GPs. Maybe so we, we go to the same doctor. We, we see that we go to the same hospital okay. in 98.5 percent of the cases because they are so. These blocks we have 30,000, 32,000 only in England, 40,000 in the UK. The hospitals are 400. So the catchment area of an hospital is way larger, mm -hmm. and we see in which hospital they go and they are balanced. But they still can choose different doctors, right? Yeah, but we doctors? don't see it happening. So okay. mothers will be so close. I mean, this is just this is just no. a street I mean, dividing. Within the hospital, there can be different uh, obstetricians, right? Uh, yeah, inside the hospital, we don't know <laughs> what they see, but they, they go to the same hospital, the same structure, the same, yeah. Um, so it seems quite convincing for London, but how does this manifest to the rest of the UK? Or are you just focusing on London? Actually, this is not London, this is Colchester, okay. medium size. But basically, so these small areas, these are LSOAs, mm -hmm. and these have uh, 1,500 households. So they tend to be relatively small. In London, they are two buildings. In larger areas, they are portions of neighborhoods. And what the where the variation come from? Where does the variation come from? Like uh, private companies keeping in I would I would discuss that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean the first decade of the 2000s is the diffusion of the internet. Yeah. Internet is not ubiquitous, uh -huh. and there is a, an increasing rollout. And some places are luckier than others, depending on how the the, the infrastructure has been built more than 100 years ago. Okay. So because if they are using the telephone company, <coughs> the telephone networks. But I will, I will. Okay, let me first talk, talk a little bit about the internet and how important it became very quickly on uh, to gather information on healthcare. So at the early days of the internet, uh, since the beginning of the internet, there was a rapid proliferation of health-related websites. It was one of the con first content that appeared on the, on the internet. Uh, Internet, I mean, this responded to the demand of people to get this information. And in fact, so we look for this survey by the PEW Institute, I think many of you might know it. Uh, and we look for a survey in the middle of our sample, 2006. And what they were reporting is that 80% of internet users declare in their survey to use the web to get some health or medical information. 60% almost of those who search, so this 80%, claim that information they got influenced the decision to treat an illness or a condition. More than half of those who search claim that the information led to ask further questions to their doctors. And 35%, and this is striking, of those who search claim, claim that the information affected their, their decision in the first place to go to a doctor. Okay. This was US uh, and uh, general survey. What about cyber? So we have looked for a US survey on parents. And again, the figure is similar. 76% declare to look for information online about childbirth and pregnancy. <coughs> Probably she did the same, I don't know. So what about UK, even that we have UK data uh, similar, so significant proportion of women search for online information, and there is evidence that there is a difference between first time and multiple time mothers. And here we have some statistics taken from this survey from Oxford. So if you are a mother in the UK, according to this survey, you tend to, first of all, you look at your primary source of information, if you look at the frequency of how it is accessed, is the book that you receive by default from the NHS. So okay, women simply browse the book, look into the book. Some of them look for a prenatal course, especially if it's the first pregnancy. So more than half of mothers take the prenatal course. Uh, but then there is the internet. And actually, a reasonable uh, number of mothers go to the NHS website, the official guidelines on the, yeah, where you should start from, hopefully. But a large share of them then look for something else. 
thing. And then there is the issue of what do you find on lab, right? So in the medical uh, discussion, uh, this was a debated topic because you can find good information online. Actually, you have official guidelines from the NHS, but you can find everything online as we discover with COVID and so on. So it's not really the average signal, but it's about the variance, right? So many studies in the medical literature document that the quality of health information online varies substantially, okay? So from links and statistics to good sources, to scholarly journals, to chat rooms, blogs, and everything you can imagine. So then sometimes people were raising concerns like uh, false information that then is reinforced because you enter into a sequence of websites, one linking to the next, the brain force a wrong story, okay? And actually there was a response by the NHS at the end of the decade to promote good information online. It was part uh, of the NHS uh, official guidelines and recommendation uh, project to improve the website, make it more visible, and so on, to give good information online to mothers. And the Healthy People program in the US had the same uh, goal for the states. So this, when you say to mothers, this is all related to childhood? Yeah, these are childhood. Yeah. Uh, no, well, no, 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 no. This, this is uh, This is in China. But okay, but they were. But it was also. And there is agreement among doctors, you know, going back to also methods. I thought that even doctors don't agree, you know, whether on the, about the desirability of the cesarean. No, actually, yeah. Uh, so the debate in the UK was uh, about reducing it because they didn't like the increasing trend. Uh, so they were even more worried when they saw that uh, over 10 years it increased. No, not by much, but the trend is upward. So then, why do we do childbirth? Uh, well, first of all, it's the most common medical reason for admission in hospital. It's the most common procedure that is performed in hospital. It's nice for econometrician, <laughs> applied researchers, because it cannot be avoided in principle. So after you decide whether you want an abortion or not, then you don't disappear from the sample. Uh, uh, and also, because the national health service is for free, uh, the private sector here has less than 2% market share. So once we got the, uh, the, the data from uh, the public hospitals, we cover basically the universe of pregnancies in the UK. And also it's nice for our setting because there is plenty of time to look for information. <laughs> so it's not something that you have to decide on the spot. <laughs> you can go online and search and make your mind. And it's also nice because we have only two, it's a simple choice. We look at the choice between C-section versus natural delivery. Okay, it's either A or B, yeah. But do women have a choice of uh, their obstetrician or is it like you go to your, to your GP, GP sends you to a certain per person and you don't have any choice of that? So yeah, so the decision from a medical perspective should be taken based on your risk profile. And that's meaning well, who will be yes. guiding you as a gynecologist and obstetrician? Is there a choice? Yeah, yeah, the mother can choose. Yeah. yeah. Can the, so yeah, so when, we, when I will show you the effect, I will show you a reduced form effect. So I don't know whether there is sorting for a different gynecologist, whether you get whatever you get, then you manage to convince by putting pressure or threatening or whatever. But in the end, they get something different. Okay. Um, then in the data, so we actually, in the data, let me say already, we observe the full risk profile of the mother. So we can actually then estimate if you want, should be the theoretical probability for every mother to get one, to get a, a, an elective C-section or to get a C-section or not. And then in the data, we also see uh, whether it's an elective C-section or whether the C-section is due to an emergency procedure. Okay. What is the difference? The elective is pre-booked, planning advanced, and then uh, yeah, you know that you have to undertake it. 
The emergency start is when you start with the natural delivery, something goes wrong, there is some risk uh, of an adverse event, and so then you end up uh, in the emergency room and the performance is such. Now, what are the incentives for the healthcare provider? So, first of all, let me say that they are not that important from a monetary perspective because the NHS employees have a fixed salary and the hospitals are publicly funded. And all hospitals, in principle, are subject to the same rules and the same incentives. For all the rest, we try to take care with our empirical design. So as I said already, these matters are going to the same place. Okay, so there can be heterogeneity between hospitals. You could use what you observe. Some hospitals have higher C-section rates than other, but in our setting, our counterfactual matters are going to the same place. So that's why we claim that the supply side effects are shut down. It's really a story about the demand, about the, about the patients getting asking for something different. Okay. The, at the same time, it's coming back to your question. I mean, the uh, if there is choice, some choice maybe, maybe not. We don't know about uh, which uh, which hospital, uh, which so, doctor to, to choose within your hospital. Yeah, uh, it would be maybe interesting to see whether a lot of the differences are across hospitals or within hospitals. Uh, yeah. Okay, this is something we didn't explore. But we need hospital, you know, but we don't know the, the identifier of the of the doctor. No, but you could see, I guess you have the data, mm -hmm. the full data on each hospital. Ah no, okay, so they compose so the variants. The the okay. okay. uh, okay. so for example, your point is important. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's whether it's sorting or yeah. Um, so I think actually already your identification shots on the supply side, but the company ah. seems to really restrict. The response to be the minimum response, right? Because you actually have the whole yeah, we have to the act against having changes in the behavior. Because I think private doctors with incentives to react more strongly. It's yeah, not a yeah. demand side shock, but it's uh, the supply side is more flexible. Yeah, maybe yeah. an interesting yeah. yeah, but I think it's very nice. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just wondering if it's generalizable to the US or Germany, where well, actually there's a lot of pause. Performance is because the office Yeah, yeah, but that's a good point. No. Do you have any idea about whether um, the internet may influence the fact that you may decide to keep yourself home, whether uh, it's for feeling personal? So the choice would be with uh, yeah. between C section and um, natural. So this is something we put and explore. Everything is conditional on ending up in an hospital because we got data from the Ministry, it's only covering hospitals. And as you pointed out, even within natural birth, you have like the, the big debate about epidural, or epidural. <laughs> yeah, we you want to do the pure thing, or you, you get the drug, you don't have that? I think, <laughs> let me check in the payments, but we, I don't think we look for uh, So we have the, if they take a, this is something we could have looked at. Because we have the procedure yeah, yeah, codes. That's yeah. variation originated with yes. 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 Um, yes. Do you have a question on whether there's a, there's a doctor inside the family? No, as I said, uh, at the level of the mother, so we, we, we cannot, we, we don't know the identity of the mothers. Okay. So we, we have a few other demographics about them. The age, the risk from mind, and we know the location. The address. Yeah, the LSOA, this neighborhood. Uh -huh. Well, let me let me discuss that. So, but let me start by the setting. Let me start by the internet. So, broadband. In, so, in, broadband internet started in the late nineties, before it was fifty six k and very slow connections. <laughs> and it, most of the access in the UK took place through the, an, an upgrade of the telephone network, of the old fashioned telephone network that was analogic at the start, and then has been converted to transfer digital signal over the line, okay? The remaining 20% is a privately owned cable network, this Virgin Media, okay? So the internet access over the telephone network required, as I said, to upgrade to the so-called DSL technology. 
okay? to transmit a digital signal. The network is made of approximately 5,500 nodes that are called the local exchanges. Okay? So the local exchanges are the nodes of this, of this network, and each local exchange covers a set of houses as a catchment areas, and it's then connected to all the houses where the final users, internet users are. Okay? We got from the uh, regulator the precise topology of the network. Okay, so we can reconstruct it. An important thing that happened in this market is that the UK was kind of lagging very much behind the internet diffusion at the end of the 90s, because the market was monopolized by British Telecom, that was the former incumbent national industry, uh, national champion in telecommunication. But the market landscape changed completely when open access policies have been introduced. So pushed by the European Union, <laughs> they had to open up the market. And the idea was very simple. They decided to break this vertical monopoly British Telecom became in charge of managing the network for everybody, but then every private company went to enter the network and start using the network to sell broadband services to final consumers, okay? This was part of some European regulation that has been approved at the, at the beginning of the 2000s, but has been implemented, so introduced in 2003, 2004 in the UK and started to have effects in 2005. Okay, so it's when at the, in the middle of the decade, in the middle of our sample, that we see that the internet starts to take off. So I guess the key identifying assumption is that it's exogenous somehow where these lines are going. And you're saying it depends on the telephone connection, but everyone yes. has telephone lines. Yes, but the, yes. So yes. couldn't you have that some of these new private companies start going into richer areas for yeah, yeah, because yeah. you, you know, that's, that's what they market. start from the city and centers. So then you lose the, the sort of yes. variation, then you may be picking up other characteristics yes. of these areas. Yes, they start for sure from richer areas. You start by connecting the center of London, the center of Manchester. But the idea is precisely to look at these small, so RDD, these RDD localized within areas that are receiving investments. Yeah. But I will show you. So this is how the internet penetration evolved. So it started a bit slowly, then finally started to pick up, and then there is the boom after 2005 when there is a new big entry of ISPs, so internet service providers. And also, new products start to come to the, to the online world. So YouTube is launched in 2008. Facebook's, Facebook arrives in the UK in 2007. So it's in the second part of the decade where also people go online, not just to send emails, but also to find more content. Okay? This is way before Twitter. This is still a first wave, let's say, of the internet. There's still no, no, Facebook arrives, but it's almost at the end of the sample. Okay? Also, internet speed starts to increase quickly after 2005, because there are continuously upgrades on the machines, on the technology that keeps improving. And then people start to get finally decent speed year after year. I mean, we are talking about speeds that are really bad for today's standards. We're talking about two megabits per second, four megabits, so very slow, and, and unstable connections. So, yeah. But, do you have information about uh, the supply of information, of health information? Yeah. Because we, that sh should also play quite some role. Yes, yes. So we, we, have some, we have a section in the paper where we discuss what was the debate at the time. And I will, I will quickly say something. No, but I, I'm not only talking about the debate, but I could, could imagine that in 2002, for example, mm -hmm. you would find much less information, right or wrong information, but much less information mm -hmm. about cesareans, for example, than in You mean volume, then uh, yes. year by year? Yeah. Yes, where we don't. We don't try to document the evolution of information over the years, maybe counting the number of blocks is what you would do. I don't know how you So there was a good volume from the beginning, probably increasing over time. 
So the point is that at the beginning of the sample, very few people were online. So internet penetration in 2005 was still below 30%. No, no, sure. Then it grew. So... Uh, the one question is, was the NHS online in 2001? For example. Well, was the NHS online? Did they provide a yeah, website? Yeah, a, a very seminal form of the website was online. The number of people who were reading it was probably very small because very few people were connected with broadband to the, to the, to the internet. The point is that in every cross-section, so in every cohort of mothers, holding constant the amount of information that we have online, there will be mothers who go and mothers who don't go. Okay. Then on the mother side, childbirth data comes from the hospital uh, episode statistics uh, that they were given us to Carol uh, from the UK Department of Health. And it's a very nice data set because you see every procedure that is performed uh, and your procedure codes and so on. And uh, you know exactly, I mean, you know what happened. You also know mother's characteristics and all the risk factors, okay? So then we know whether it was a C-section or an natural delivery or something else. And we know also the outcomes, okay? So for the mother and from the newborn. They also record the geographical location of the mother. Of course, they don't give us the exact address, but they give us the, one of the smallest uh, census areas that you can have in the UK, which is the lower layer super output area. And these are areas with approximately 1,500 residents, which means more or less 650 households. Okay, so. Misrepresentation comes from the data. <laughs> Now, whether they get to no, it's a medical, uh, it's a med the doctors online can confirm it's a medical uh, <laughs> Yeah. So, okay, so the internet data came from the uh, UK regulator, which is Ofcom, and they, got, they gave us press detailed information on telephone infrastructure. In, actually, we wrote a paper, a couple of papers using this data already. We know the exact location of the local exchange. Okay, so the geographic coordinates of these nodes of the grid and the exact catchment area. So if I know that your house in a certain point in the UK, I know to which uh, local exchange you are connected. So then we can compute the distance between where the mothers live. Here we have to take the centroid of the LSOA because we don't know the exact address and the local exchange. And we compute the linear distance. Okay. Actually, in reality, then the line is never perfectly straight. It follows pipes and so on. But that's the best we can do because we don't have it so much. We also know what is the NDSL technology installed in the local exchange. So then we can also kind of calculate what is the predicted theoretical speed that someone in this position, in a certain position, can get. Okay. And then because we have census data, we have demographic characteristics of the small area where, we, where, where the mass So is. going back to my question, you do have a lot of information on the demographic, social on the demographic characteristics, yes. age and form. Yes, of the LSOA. Income. 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 We have income, yeah. Not at the individual, yeah. Not at the individual level, but the neighborhood, the neighborhood yes. Comes at the neighborhood yes. So you, you can and that's actually what we use to show that the samples are balanced. Plus, you can, you know, the, I think the beauty is also you have variation within the geographical unit across mothers' experience, not experience. Yes, yes. So that gives you additional. Yes, yes, yes. You, you will see. Yeah. So, what do we exploit? We exploit the feature of the technology because if it was fiber, it wouldn't work because fiber has no decay. It doesn't matter whether you're far or close to your local exchange when the decay rate of the signal is zero. But the ADSL works on copper. And copper, especially at the time, has a decay of signal that is a function of distance. So when you were, prom when you were promised 24 megabit per second, or I don't know, 10 year, 20 years ago, four megabits per second, this was a promise. This was the theoretical speed 
So you would get you if you were sitting on top of the long exchange. <laughs> but this is not what you get if you are four kilometers away. Okay. Yeah. You're saying you have balance based on the distance to LE, right? Yes. Uh, for example, also, did you also look at real estate prices? Because you, you would expect that uh, yeah, LE will be. Paper, um, yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. really, really orthogonal to this. Wow. We, we, we checked for that. We also included in the, in the specifications. And actually, this is a fact that is very known in the industry. It is a quote from an Ofcom report that says a characteristic of the ADSL broadband is that performance degradates due to signal loss over the length of the telephone line. This means that the speeds available to different customers vary significantly. Okay. And only the very lucky one get what they were promised. Okay. Yeah. So it's actually not the switch normal getting internet is the speed. Yes. Right. So yes. So when we, it's not that easy. exactly. So that, let me say two things. There is a paper on the American Economic Review by Falk and Motors, and they look at the they have similar design, but they basically draw a line here and they compare municipalities that are above four kilometers and before four kilometers. Here they say that at least in Germany, in the same years that we have those above four. And basically zero internet because the, the signal is so bad that yeah it's so slow the connection and unreliable that people in our case as i will show you what we can so for the for sake of presentation i'm saying no internet versus internet but what i should say is good internet versus bad internet. with the idea that if internet is very bad you don't spend a lot of time on that okay or you tend to some point you're fed up and you don't look. In any case, if this is true, information is anyway there, it shouldn't matter that we should find zero time. Okay. Now you would expect that if you're really interested in your internet at home is bad, you go somewhere else. You go for the office. So that suggests what you are saying. Exactly. Then we should the find effect is even, the effect is even bigger. The potentials, yeah, probably we're estimating a lower bound. Okay, so now you understand perfectly my figure because this is a position of a local exchange and this is another local exchange. And then dark blue line here, this is, this is the catchment areas of the local exchanges. So this is a lucky LSOA and their neighbors here, they are just unlucky because they are relatively farther, they have more distance to the local exchange. So these are, these are good internet, these are bad internet. And in comparison, would be between mothers living in Okay. So you compare the contiguous one, how do you do it? The contiguous. So to be, uh, so let me say the following. We start from 40,000 uh, LSOAs. We end up with 2,418, uh, uh, so 1,209 pairs. And to be a, a, an eligible pair, you have to be sharing a border that matches the border of the local exchange. Yeah, yeah. they have to be sharing the <laughs> they have to be yeah. and uh, yeah. also your border should match, uh, should be on top of the border of your of local exchanges. So basically, I'm sure that the mothers living in the green are connected to this one, and the mothers living in the red are connected to this one. Okay. And of course, out of uh, Almost forty thousand. We we have to boil down. We boil down to two thousand and something. And to be part of a pair, you must have one good, one bad, or the all included. No, all included. Well, I mean, uh, the, we never find two L two LSOAs are perfectly the same distance. So there is always a close and a far. Yeah. Just but let me show one, the one or one point five kilometer is both close from the graph. Yeah, yeah, but we, we always compare in within the couple. You have couple fixed effect and actually couple time trends fixed effect to control for potential neighborhood trends. Uh, that you may worry or refer to this movie. Well, I love about that. So let me show you the descriptive stats. And I want to say two things. So, first of all, look at this part. This is the balance between those that we catalog, those that are close in within the couple, the close and the far, right, based on the distance. 
they tend to be balanced in characteristics. Okay, so for instance, I don't know, this is by construction because MSOAs they have to be 1,500. But for instance, uh, part time share of part time workers, share of full time workers, share of Y, high skill, they tend to be balanced at the beginning and at the end of the sample. Okay, so I'm simply applying the geographical constraint. I'm not doing any rematching, any reshuffling, any rebalancing. Just by applying the criteria, the geographical criteria, they end up to be balanced in demographics. Uh, what they are not balanced on, also the number of deliveries, yearly deliveries in the MSOA, what they are not balanced on is, of course, the distance by construction. Okay, so the Average far LSOA, it's more than three kilometers to the local exchange, 3.2. The average close LSOA is 1.7. Okay. Another interesting thing that we were happy about, these LSOAs are not strangely positioned in the UK. If you look at their characteristics, they look very much the average LSOA. So they're representative of the general population. Okay, because here it's the column where I have all LSOAs. Okay, yes. It's a bit of a stupid question, but with 1500 people, how can you have 2064 deliveries max? The ultimate line? Yeah. Full sample, min max? So in a year? No, no, in min, a, in min max, year? min max, just the left. You go from one delivery to 2,000. No, well, I mean, but it, so the average, they are constructed well on average, I don't know, 2,000. Yes. <laughs> that means that the father is just be delivering too. <laughs> 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 or, or that the data has some, I guess it's some data problems because the, yeah, this is the, the, group, the, the this gap is between the mean and the max yeah, is yeah, a bit crazy. This is the group data. I never noticed that. <laughs> This is the raw data, you didn't touch it. Maybe there is a misrecording. Uh, I, now you should go back and check. But the number of deliveries is based on the, the hospital data. <laughs> the number of deliveries is based on the hospital. Maybe there was some mis... Uh, or maybe there's like one large hospital that is like... Yeah, yeah, but you have to, you have to report the LSOE of residents uh, of the mother. Maybe, I don't know. So, for instance, if you are if you are a refugee, do you, which LSOA do you get? I don't know. No, they get, yeah. I don't know. So they maybe about delivery. Maybe these are strange. I don't know. Are any more? Mean of standard deviation. Well, I mean, check out how many such people numbers you have. Yeah, yeah. It's one or two, then it's obviously a mistake. Yeah, yeah. If it's many, then the data <laughs> might have a serious problems. You know, grazie, Michael. I will have to check. I want to check now. Oh, you all want to know the Just send us. Yeah. Okay, what is the good news? We start from seven weeks. So, an average cohort in the UK is approximately 700,000 newborn. We have 10 years. So, we start from a nice sample of 7 million deliveries. So, even if we have to cut the data to find these pairs, uh, Across the two across the borders on the two sides of the border, we end up with half a million deliveries, which is a good sample size to work with. And again, we can check to have been uh, too big for the power of computers 20 years ago. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, they, and the mothers are balanced in characteristics. Uh, the only thing that we don't balance that is not balanced by constructor using the geographical criteria is the age. So as you can see, there is a 0.3 years uh, of difference, which is four months. It does, I mean, due to the huge sample size, it turns out to be significant. So then in the paper, we have a robustness in which we rebalance on these characteristics and we got the very same estimates. Important be the C section rates between the mothers living in the close LSOA and the mothers living in the far LSOA at the starting point of the data set is balanced. So these mothers were having the very same C section rate in the I'm sorry to bother you with these stupid questions, but the standard deviation of mean age is six on the full sample. Yes. You have 0.3 and it has a p value of zero. 
is there some selection issue that they all have uh, exactly the same age? Uh, so the standard so, deviation of the full sample yeah, six. is six. So point, yeah. point 0.3 would not be significant, right? With, not such, a, with, with such a large uh, yes. standard deviation. Or then there is something I don't understand because point 0.3 no, it's weird. Shouldn't. But no, but if you run the t-test, if you run the t-test... So it means uh, that you have a sample selection of people who are really all around 29. Yeah. Right? The, the, the standard deviation in the sample must, must be, what, 50 times less than uh, the standard deviation of the total. It's the standard deviation, of, not of the mean. Or because you divide by the number, square root of the yes, number. That's Okay. Because of that. No, but it's in the pair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, uh, there should be elevation. Anyway, can I, can I say something? Because it's already 123. We announced that uh, most questions will come at the end. So maybe some people <laughs> have questions that they really kind of wanted want to, to respect. My suggestion so is one. Maybe we allow you okay, to, to, to finish. Then, uh, and then we have 15 minutes. Right okay, here. let me show you this speed over time. Among those who go online and buy internet, it was very slow on average. And as you can see, uh, the identification strategy is doing the job. So those who are close and those who are far, they have a gap in speed. Okay. This is session rate over time. As I was saying, there is an increasing trend. And this is uh, elective and an emergency. And this is a graph that kind of summarizes a bit the paper. So the two lines were overlapping until the internet booms after the liberalization. And then the two lines separate. Let's see if this is uh, statistically, uh, so this survives the econometric analysis. So this is the regression model that we estimate. Why is the outcome at the mother? Um, at the mother level that delivers in an hospital in a certain year and lives in the LSOAJ. Okay. The mother is categorized as close if she lives in, uh, in a close LSOA. Post is after 2005, after the, the real uh, start of the internet. And then we have a classic diff in diff uh, coefficient. Then we control for mother characteristics, everything that we know about the mother. We have time fix effect, LSOA fix effect, hospital fix effect. And then we have these trends at the pair LSOA level. Okay? You might think that the neighborhood where the two mothers live, it's on a certain trend or something else is exactly. Okay? The outcomes can be C section or outcomes of the mother or the newborns. Okay. So the assumption that you require for these are minimal because we don't impose. So first of all, there is no measurement error. Why the speed if we try? Uh, I would also have a reflection when I try to use some model estimated speed at the LSOA level to quantify the size of the effect, meaning one megabit extra of speed how much cessation rate changes, but there I have a measurement error problem because the distance is not perfectly measured. Here, it's fine. So that's a close LSOA according to our definition. Then we have uh, what I have already said, and here the only identifying assumption that I need is some correlation between being on one or the other side of the, of the line and the other one. Okay. And I can assume whatever the reason function for the distance, I don't care. Okay? While in the other, I have to interpolate and assumptions. And this is the result. So we find that uh, being a treated mother, so being close and having good internet is increasing the cessation rate. The effect is mostly coming from the first time mothers. So the inexperienced consumer, let's say, in the market. And the last column is nice because this is the um, emergency C-section. You remember, we can categorize, we see if it's an emergency or an elective. 
If you want, this is a sort of placebo. I'm not, I'm never always convinced that this is a real placebo, but for sure, here you have to find a smaller effect. Because if it's emergency, it's the doctor deciding based on the risk profile. Still, something can go on, so I don't want to take it as a full placebo, because if you are trying by internet information that you have seen, as soon as things may might not go very well, you might put more pressure on your doctor, and then it's easier that you end up with an emergency. Okay, so, but for sure, because here the doctor plays a larger role, you should find a smaller effect and possibly not Okay, these are the outcomes. And we don't find them see if there is a very yeah, anesthetic. So we have the epidural, but we don't find an effect. Okay. Uh, and this is for the newborn. So again, uh, this doesn't seem to be a marginal mother or that have, who has a health situation that requires a section over the making this decision is relevant. For the health outcomes, these are probably mothers who, under, I mean, they have a certain view of what should happen and they manage to obtain what they want from their doctor. So, we were a we verified robustness using an alternative identification strategy where we try to predict the speed that are available at the LSOA based on the distance and the technology. So, basically, we are exploiting this line that I showed you. So we know the technology, every technology, different vintage and type of ADSL at a different curve that we got from the literature. And we basically create a model estimated speed at the LSOA level for the mothers who live in that LSOA. And what are the pros and cons? So the pros is that, yeah, then you, you can put a number on the speed available. You don't need a timing assumption. So before we were considering before 2005 pre-treatment. So now you can get a continuous increase in your treatment variable. The other side of the coin is that um, we must use the centroid of the LSOA. We don't know mother's exact location. So there is measurement error in this. Now we measure this speed. Okay. And also, all these curves are based on some 2009 and 2010 data, which we have to reproject backwards. And you know, the technology has changed a lot over the years. So our speed measure might have some problems. But then the empirical model looks pretty much, pretty much like the other one. We just use speed now. Okay, and that's what we find. So in this case, again, the first time mother effect survives, and now we can quantify it, but now we fail to get uh, an effect on the whole sample. That can be due to the noise of the measurement error, can be many things. This is the, let's say, robustness that we have in the paper. Now, a bit of the heterogeneity effect. So as I told you, the effect is mainly coming from low income and low educated mothers. And also, yeah, also try also then over the years, catch up with the high educated. So high educated mothers and high income mothers tended to have an higher C-section rate, mainly due to the fact that they were working, they had busy schedules, they like to have the plant C-section on a certain day and be able to the week after to be back in office probably. The low educated I mean, stuff. The other, the other idea is that they know better. And so maybe it's good. Well, they don't know better. Yes, exactly. Uh, exactly. Women are the point yeah. is, yeah, when we look at the discussion in the years, for, so it's all anecdotal. But a lot of discussion was exactly about the high income mothers or even celebrities getting their C-section and they became a sort of model for low educated or for people who were reading certain type of uh, out news outlets. So this fits with this story, but we don't know for sure. So another story can be that uh, scanning information online is more powerful if you don't have really the means to understand probability, statistics, to sort out what is a good study and a bad study, 
So maybe low, in, low educated mothers could start reading all these blogs, pushing for C-section because uh, Victoria Beckham did a C-section and they think they want one. Uh, they don't understand the risks or whatever. But and then they, they, they treat. Yeah, are you controlling for it? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Is this controlling for it? Yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. No, well, the graphs, no, the regressions, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we got all Yes. Yeah. Yeah. At the same time, it puts a stop to the growth of C sections among the educated. When when you were telling us that yeah, yeah, it's not clinical and trading, yeah. which is second half. Yeah, but uh, then the regression, yeah, yeah, the high educated, they increase a bit, but it's not so good. It's mainly coming from the low educated. The low educated are first time mothers. This more, yeah. Sorry. See, since you know the literature on access to the internet and all your various papers, so is there an age factor? I mean, younger people being more exposed, and then so mm -hmm. I was thinking more about the among the characteristics about the demographic characteristics and age in particular. Yeah. You know, well, yeah, yeah. Well, so do we know that this the, the, so the the age the age cohort, let's say, broadly speaking, that first went online was not the real the real young, was the thirty to fifty. Also because they were exposed to it at, at the work. Okay, so at it the doesn't workplace. correspond with first time mothers. It's more the, the first mother is speaking out it's experience speaking, more than yes, well, it's generation. relatively younger than the multiple time mother. So it can be closer to the internet generation and is in search for information. Multiple time mothers, uh, they already know the job. <laughs> and uh, we, we see in the, in the service as well that they, uh, they look for less. That they need less information. For instance, but if you then do the prenatal course or do for okay, back of the envelope calculation. Can you write a paper uh, without the back of the envelope calculation? No. So average UK cohort is 750,000 newborns per year. The increase in percentage. Uh, the, the, percent, uh, the percent increase in the probability that this is section we estimated, we know the difference in cost, monetary cost, so we can calculate the yearly extra cost for the national health system as, as, as service to, to induced by these extra C sections. Of course, this is just this is a monetary estimate for the, the extra cost of having these mothers that have to stay longer in hospital and undergo a, a sur uh, surgery. All other costs we cannot include. So there can be psychological costs that both said this because these mothers will realize that they want the C-section and now if you don't give it, you can create pain and whatever. So all psychological costs are not in this calculation. And also long term costs, because I mean, it's a surgery, so you can have long term consequences. They're only estimating the short term ones. It also increases the probability of a second reception, it's your first. So, can create extra costs in the future. Okay. So, these conclusions, but we have eight, so maybe I can take some questions. But um, yeah, we see that at least in this context, uh, the arrival of the internet has changed what patients get from their doctors. What about drugs and other procedure? What about when you are facing a private doctor and not a public doctor? The effect is driven by first time mothers, so the inexperienced consumer. Multiple time mothers are not affected, but can also be an age effect, so they were older and they didn't, they were not so keen looking online, or it can simply be experienced. We don't find effects on the healthcare outcomes of mothers and newborns. And yeah, let me say our findings corroborate the arguments of those who consider important to supply good quality information online, uh, as we discovered during COVID, maybe, uh, to patients. That's all. <laughs> So we have uh, Mr. Goldman who would like to ask a question online. Uh, yes, uh, good morning, everyone, and congratulations. This was a very interesting presentation. Well, I have one or two questions as remarks. The first is that your assumption from is that actually the mother is making the decision to get a C-section, yes or not. 
In real life, this is not what happened. She will obviously discuss with the doctor. The doctor has still an important role in making health decisions, as you mentioned at the beginning. So I'm just wondering, uh, you know, how you took into consideration the dialogue of the mother with the doctor and, and also with, uh, with the father, actually, which I'm sure that this is a matter of discussion uh, of uh, of the the mother with uh, <clears throat> with, with the father. Um, then the, the the second point is indeed about the quality of information on the internet, and I think that it might well be that as far as this section is concerned, uh, I guess that the information is probably, and I had a quick look during pre your presentation, is, is rather well balanced and at, of, of reasonable quality, which is not the case for other health situations. And obviously I'm especially thinking about COVID. So I'm just wondering whether you, you are also considering to, to launch a similar study on more, I would say, controversial healthcare issues. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So thanks for the comment. So as I said at the beginning of the presentation, uh, to address this topic, you can, uh, this question, you can take different routes. One is to try to open the black box of the discussion of the doctor and patients and the household, maybe running a survey. Um, we took a different approach. We wanted to have to, to show you that if you take the big data and uh, reveal preferences and what people do, Something is changing, something is happening. We don't know. Uh, as I said, uh, we don't follow these mothers at home. So we don't know what they look uh, for online. We don't follow them in the clinic. So we don't know the, what is the interaction with the doctor. But if you believe my identification, if you believe that I'm showing you that the very similar mother with same characteristics, living in the same neighborhood, but being exposed to these two different treatments, internet, no internet, behave differently, get diff something different at the end, it must be that the, something has happened. Now we leave to others uh, to understand what. If they uh, uh, have a different view in mind after, uh being exposed to the internet or searching online or if it's uh, the interaction with the doctor or a combination um this is something we cannot uh, we cannot do uh the, the h e s data didn't come with specific records for the seven million mothers of what they did so we have to stop uh, there for the second part of course, uh, yeah, we are thinking now about the COVID spin-off, but let's see, uh, let's see. Yeah, but if I may just add one point, uh, since you are focusing on the impact of the internet, I think that what would have been interesting is to look at the, at the quality of the information which is on the internet. And actually we did such a study related to uh, probiotics and the influence of probiotics and, and how it is present on the internet. And I think that the, this is an important component when you look at the impact of yeah. the internet to look what's what's there and the quality of what you can find there. Yeah, yeah. I tried to summarize that in one slide, but in the paper we have we have a section where we discuss what type of information you find online uh, and so on. Uh, for instance, uh, if you take other, other domains like politics, uh, there is more polarization of views online for sure. Uh, but that's about the supply. It's always difficult to weigh by market share to understand what, are really, what people are really reading online. Because when you have millions of sources, some of them account, count for zero, uh, but then altogether they can count a lot. So it's a different, it's a difficult, uh, task, uh, but for sure it's an important one. Thank you. Uh, maybe maybe a separate research question, no idea if that's, that's already been done, but I think social scientists have argued a lot that the internet contributed to like the climate fertility, the 
people have not shared that sexual intercourse. Um, and I think the balance check goes a bit in that direction. It's more than like significant, but there's less uh, mothers having children. Have you looked into like whether whether the, the birth actually dropped in like a more yeah, I don't think it's really a very study like three, four years later. But and now I think it's we didn't do because I mean, the, the, the data that we got stops at 18, uh, sorry, at 11, 2011, and we didn't get any data afterwards. Um, well, at the end of the sample, they're still balanced. Eh? So the, let me check. Can you sense more than I think it's significant, 0.1 something, right? I know, but these are the I didn't split by year. Now, here you cannot see because these are census. But this is uh, because the next one has something, but I guess that's all the food ones, so it kind of picks up maybe that at the end, but not at the start. Like in the next class. No, I don't know, but this is C-section. Uh, yeah, it's only C-section at the beginning, but they don't have deliveries at the beginning yeah. and at the end. Yeah. And only about, yeah, there is only number yeah, of deliveries. Yeah. But it stays balanced throughout the sample. <laughs> but it might be balanced yeah, at the yeah, start. I don't know. Yeah. No, I, mean, I don't even know if it's an interesting question. It was just mm -hmm. something that came to mind because we gave that. I thought that a few times that argument being made that, uh, okay. that it's... I mean, we checked a lot of, uh, in a different paper, we checked a lot of this, uh, but there are some working papers that we saw popping up were actually confirmed in our data, like uh, papers on worker mobility, they become more mobile because they can find job offers uh, more easily. And for instance, uh, and in our data, the, the other process we use the BHPS, which is the British Household Panel Survey and then Understanding Society. We don't find uh, that those who live before in better internet connected areas are more likely to relocate. Uh, so I don't know. In fact, I, mean, I saw these working papers popping up, but I never seen them published. <laughs> I don't know. So we, we have one question online, if we can answer okay. it. You come next. Sophie Alexander Carlin. Yes, hello. I, um, I wondered whether you would expand. We, the sound is terribly bad. Can you come closer to your microphone? Can you hear me? Vaguely. I don't know, is the sound coming there or on your computer? No, here. I wonder if you could expand a bit on the less educated women, because most data show that it's the more educated women who get more cesarean on demand. There's data from uh, even in the town of Brussels, we know that hospitals which serve more educated people have a higher rate of C-section. And it's true in the US, it's true in Australia, it's true in most parts of the yeah, world. We've got a sort of an inverse uh, situation. Oh, well, I mean, what, what I'm documenting is Can a you change. Explain it? <laughs> what we are documenting is a change. So the high educated mother, they tend to have an higher propensity to go for a C-section. So that's for sure. So they start from a higher level. It's the change. So, the, but the effect of the internet is strong for the low educated. So these are, the low educated are those who increase, but they stay actually below in terms of in absolute terms. Maybe okay. Thank you. So, so my question is that uh, because the, the, the child delivery is the of the of technology. <laughs> so uh, I'm wondering if the, the technology remains the same that uh, if, we, if you use another human viable like uh, very professional treatment like cancer treatment, 
so uh, if it comes to you, you will make the same that uh, people will tend to put in the procedure more frequently than before after access to the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can speculate a lot, you know? <laughs> and I don't know. Uh, uh, we can uh, we can think about a lot of us uh, settings and so on. One maybe takeaway uh, that is general, that some external validity, is that the, the content, the, the informational content that you find online matters, and even in a setting in which the doctor should not be influenced. By the attitude of the patient, what the patient's demands. Even in this context, these patients manage to get more of what they want. Okay, this applies probably to also to medicines, other types of treatments, and so on. Uh, what happens in every specific case, we cannot say, of course. Uh, I wonder, did you try testing uh, whether the coefficients were stable between the first half and the second half of the period? What do you mean, coefficients so if, were stable? So just take the first 250,000 uh, deliveries, then mm -hmm. the, between 2000, 2005, and then the others, 2006, 2011. Yeah. Because if the information that comes out uh, becomes good over time, if there is common joint learning, you should see less of an effect on the number, but a bigger effect on the oh, health. Yes. And I don't know if you've tried uh, splitting no, a sample in two. So. Okay. Because all the signs but of the health uh, outcomes were the right, uh, I mean, what I would like to see that information helps, not significant, but all of the right signs. Okay. And so maybe you know the first well, half is yeah, just yeah. noise and the second half is learning. If if it's the case, it would be a nice but the speeds are different. Yeah, but, um, the speeds in the first half are very low, and so the treatment and controls are not that different. Yeah, exactly. They, they, the, that's they, my they, question. Yeah, if, yeah. if there is a way to resample re mid-course uh, and check the same effects. So it's the same regression, just fitting a sample in two. No, no, maybe we can use the, she's right, because in the first part of the 2000s, which we actually put to zero in the, in the first uh, part, in the first specification, there is less than 20% of people online, 15, even exactly. 10. Then if you want to look at uh, the written and the control in the first decade, you may have to, you probably have to go to the city center of London, but this is something we can do. To, to yeah, come to your point. Technically, it should be feasible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And check a treated mother and a control mother who then comes from London. <laughs> so, in very. No, but you redo the pairs and you read. No, but the problem at the beginning of the sample is that everybody is a control because very few people have internet. If you want to have treated and controls in, at the beginning of the sample, you really have to look for. The few areas in the UK. So you may have more areas in 2005. Well, you, you may mean? have more treatments in 2005 than in 2000. Yeah, yeah. So, so redoing, like redoing the calculation. Yeah. Ah, you mean you would not have sufficiently many pairs in the first half? Exactly. Right? Everybody is a control in 2000, almost everybody. Because then I have to apply my identification looking for it. Uh, then, then maybe 2007, you know, 2000 to 2007. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do just maybe a couple of years the... and check from 2004 to 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah. That may be too small yeah. as a sample, but yeah, yeah. that's why I was saying speaking yes. even too. Yes. No, I think he was. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think that's quite an interesting methodology. Um, coming back to Michelle's points, uh, indeed, this is a case where I guess you could think in comparison to, let's say, opioids or whatever, where the doctor is more in control, or at least doctor shopping, which is the way in which you can get access to opioids without really needing them really. Uh, there you have a lot of competition in the US and so on. You have these mill mills and everything. Here, you have to go to your local hospital. Maybe there could be a bit of doctor shopping within the hospital. We don't yeah. Know. Yeah. But beyond that, 
It's Indeed, uh, the only thing you can do is try and plead a bit with the doctor, but if the doctor has from you, then that's uh, their decision. Yeah. And, and you still show that it has an effect. Yes. Which I think is, is interesting. I agree with Michelle, it would be nice. So maybe a COVID spin off would be a nice thing to look at cases where there is more, uh, let's say, controversy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, vaccination being yeah. a light. Uh, yes. And, uh, and where people, I remember a seminar we had here where they, at some point in, uh, in Italy, there was a court decision uh, claiming somebody had suffered from a vaccine in terms of autism, even though this thing has been completely uh, discredited. Mm -hmm. Okay, it took more than 10 years for the Lancet to, to withdraw the paper, but, but still what they were showing is that all of a sudden, there was a lot of internet Search yeah. across all vaccines, even so. I think indeed it would be nice. You would expect probably more of an impact of uh, of uh, the the internet on this kind of thing. But the yeah. fact that you already show that something is happening, this I think is is indeed frightening. At the same time, it's okay. Less less uh, informed people getting closer to what happens to richer, more educated, informed people. Plus, it doesn't seem to be bad in terms of, of health outcomes, in which, which case, is reassuring. Yeah. So it has an impact. And maybe the doctors say, OK, uh, I myself think it's a bit unclear. So why not? Uh, uh, yeah, well, because, other, yeah. because in the end, there, there is, OK, it costs 6 million, which is not that much. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't change things. Well, yeah, well, it goes against what was the plan of the NHS, it was to reduce research. Okay, but maybe they wanted so, to do that yeah. for, for financial reasons, yeah, yeah. which are which is respectable, but it doesn't well, lead maybe to maybe Michelle knows more of it. The, doesn't lead to, to health catastrophes, yeah. it seems. Yeah. No, no, that's for sure. Yeah. Just a quick um, comment on my earlier comments that there is a paper that shows exactly that when there is time pressure on the doctor, right? Mm -hmm. So when there's like a lot of patients coming, uh, they suddenly start to increase the C-sections and exactly for, uh, uh, for the uh, less educated women, because these women are less likely to, you know, to- to Oppose. Yeah, so basically to uh, deny uh, saying, no, no, I'm going to do it without a C-section and so on. So uh, what, what they see is that uh, an increase in pressure on in the number of patients Per, per doctor uh, results in higher C-sections for lower educated women. Mm -hmm. And here I'm thinking that could be that internet created some kind of bottlenecks for certain doctors who are supposed to be good or like famed to be good. So this kind of superstar effect that the internet creates for many products uh, uh, there is. So that's why I'm thinking that uh, maybe reallocation of patients mm -hmm. which resulted in some inefficiencies uh, which then created bottlenecks and uh, a higher uh, pressure on certain doctors, which then react resulted in higher C-sections for uh, for uh, poorer women who are less likely to uh, refuse the procedure. So that, that that's that's basically what. Uh, what well, could have been? Uh, well, I was thinking. That yes. Maybe I don't know. Is there a, a system of uh, what are the name in the US? The blue cards. So in the US, you can rate your doctor and the profile of the doctor is known. This is something, uh, uh, but in the UK, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know about the US, but uh, coming from Cadiz, the mm -hmm. very first thing that people did when the internet arrived is to start uh, exchanging information about the doctors. And then, the you doctors. Had, and then you had a lot of demand for the same doctor and uh, mm -hmm. almost like very low demand for others. Or, I mean, or, so mm -hmm. basically more random people came to, to uh, but more uh, advanced people who knew about the thing. Uh, the, uh, okay. They went to- Yeah, this can be one of the mechanisms. I don't know in the UK, uh, this is something we didn't imagine, but it's possible, yeah. But maybe you can try to look at the Google Trends uh, things about uh, C-section and so on, and to understand what kind of websites were uh, more um, uh, uh, websites about about uh, uh, motherhood were more uh, uh, trending. No, no, yeah, time. this we did. Ah, okay. So in the in the paper there is a small section where we discussed that. The problem is to, I mean, compile a list of websites is a yeah. It's a difficult task because there are a thousand of websites and then uh, they all have a very small volume. 
Mm, okay. Um, so because it's very far away, twenty of time, you cannot now categorize whether and, yeah, those means, were about yeah, yeah, searching yeah, for a doctor yeah, rather yeah. than uh, 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 learning more about procedures. I don't know if there was a, like a, a booking.com for doctors at the time, uh, but and because I, in the, in I the, think the, most of the discussion was on blogs and uh, the procedures and what to choose and what are the, what are the consequences. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, maybe time for one last question. We still have two minutes. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Well, uh, is there is there one? Yep. No. Well, then. Uh, okay. Thanks a lot. So thanks. Thank you. Great.